In today's video, I wanna give you a very short list of seven core training exercises that anyone with a disc bulge, disc herniation, post-surgery or fusion should not be doing. If these are in your program, if you're trying to get these, sneak these things in at some point in your workout, let's stop doing it all together. There's so many more exercises you can be doing and this list of seven are ones that you should stay away from. I don't know why I'm holding up three fingers, because it's seven. What is up guys, William here from fitnessforbackpain.com where I teach you how to overcome persistent, chronic low back pain by mastering your mindset, improving your movements, and building smarter strength. Really excited about today's video, training, talking about core training and what you should not be doing as far as exercises go. But before we get into that, if you want to actually core train, if you want to core your train correctly, if you want to train your core correctly, You've gotta make sure what you're doing is the smartest thing for your sensitive back situation. I've got a free guide that you can download, keep forever, and apply in every single workout that you do, whether you're just doing one exercise for the day or you have a whole day geared towards core training. You can get it at fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash core blueprint. All right, so the first core exercise on our list that you should just, just erase out of your workout routine is the GHD sit-up. GHD, glute ham developer, is a machine or a tool uh, that can be a great tool in the gym. I I'm not sure who coined the GHD sit-up. Let's just go on, out on a limb and say CrossFit did. So if you've ever seen people in the gym, they're on this GHD machine, you'll see a video or an image pop up of someone doing this. And essentially, they're, they got their legs strapped in, they're going all the way back into extension, trying to touch or come close to touching the ground, and then sitting all the way back up. Now, for lots of people who have sensitivity, obviously if you've been fused or any kind of disc surgery, herniations, bulge, this type of movement where you're going into overextension, overflexion, and you're repeating this over and over and over, and not, you know, doing the chicken dance, that is not an ideal situation for a sensitive low back. So if you're looking at core training from a place of, I wanna get out of pain, we have to take ourselves away from really breaking too far into these full ranges of motion in the lumbar spine. Think more stability, think more keeping things stiff, keeping things neutral for right now. And there's always room for more challenging core exercises down the road, but the GHD sit-up is not one that you should be doing. The second core exercise that I give you full permission to remove from your training program is the on the ground leg raise or leg drop. This is often done with straight legs. I just say don't do it, I don't do it. A lot of people have an issue with maintaining a good, healthy, neutral low back. If you have an issue with that, definitely check out other videos on my YouTube channel where I teach you how to find that neutral and how to train the core without flattening your low back. I've got content on that you can check out. But for most people with a sensitive low back with some kind of post-surgery situation, they just don't need to be putting this much stress and strain on that lower back. Odds are when you're dropping your legs down or when you're trying to come back up, you're losing your focus in the core. It's a more of an advanced exercise, especially if you have a low back sensitivity. Now I'm not saying you can never do these again. There's always room for building resilience and adding these exercises back in. But if you're sensitive, if core training or exercise in general is causing you pain and you're doing this exercise, cut it out. All right, so the third exercise that you should stop doing is this one. You've no idea what I'm talking about. It's the cable crunch, right? You got a cable machine, they usually wrap this thing around like this, and they're either standing or they're in a crunch position, and they're trying to do crunches. It's, if you do it right, it could really hammer the abs and hit that anterior part of your trunk. It's good, but the problem is, if you think about it, if you have a sensitive low back, if flexion, is an intolerance for you, like your body doesn't tolerate flexion well, then this core exercise is going to beat flexion into your body. So if you're already on your knees doing this, or you're standing up and doing it, and you're trying to bend over and get that really good contraction in the abs, well, you're kind of blowing out, not literally, but you're blowing out the low back, right? You're, you're exposing that lower back in that intolerant position. It's not, this is gonna cause you back pain. It's not about that. It's about training smarter for your specific situation right now. The fourth core exercise you should stop doing is the Russian twist. This is often done 
on some kind of like stability ball. What you do is you're on your back, the ball's between your shoulder blades, you're holding some kind of plate, and you're basically rotating and shifting back and forth. Now, it's a great rotational functional exercise, but the problem is rotation for a sensitive low back is often a pain trigger. So for focusing on taking away pain triggers, the Russian twist is one that you should take off of your list. Our focus should always be about creating stability, tension and stiffness in the low back and in the trunk. And we can always add in more rotational type of dynamic exercises later, but let's build your resilience up first. So the fifth exercise is actually a pretty common one that you see a lot. It's the side to side ball taps. Usually you're on your butt, your feet are up off the ground. You're kind of in this hunched over position and you're like, oh, oh, this is so hard. That you're basically doing, you're making that exact face. Trust me, I've seen you do it. You look ugly. Your face just, I'm just kidding, but seriously, Doing the ball taps is just, it's, it kind of goes back to that rotational thing. You're in this awkwardly flexed position. You're trying to like maybe keep a neutral spine when you're doing it and you're trying to stay stiff. But eventually as you get more and more tired, you're gonna break down. Breakdown of an exercise, breakdown of technique and form leads to sensitivity. Sensitivity leads to flare ups, leads to week, two, three weeks of pain that you're like, I wonder how that happened. I'm in the gym working out. If you're doing the ball taps, there's other exercises that you can do to hit the core. This is keeping your low back in a really kind of awkward flexed position. And odds are right now, you're a flexion intolerant. So step away from that, remove this exercise and add something else in. The sixth exercise is the good old fashioned sit up. I hate this exercise. I haven't done a sit up in like years cause they're just dumb. Like you can do so much more things in the gym that don't involve sit ups. Like they're not even good core, a core exercise. Like they're, they're like a hip flexor exercise. But in all seriousness, flexion, repeat flexion over and over and over. You're on, you got your legs strapped in or you're going just raw and you have nothing holding your legs down and you're just trying to grunt these sit ups out. Just stop doing it. It's a lot of unnecessary movement and flexion in the lower back and right now, again, odds are it's a pain trigger. So no more sit ups, no more crunches, take them out, let's do something different. All right, so the seventh and final core exercise that I say take away, and I actually shot another video on this and it breaks it down even more on why I don't agree with this specific exercise, but it's the hanging leg raise. So you've got two elements at play here. You've got the hanging part, which is the decompression, which may actually feel kind of good for a lot of people, but you have this stretching element to the core exercise. Then in that stretched position, you're trying to contract your abs and bring your knees up to your face or your toes up to the bar or just coming out at 90, whatever you're trying to do. You're going from this stretch position, then contracted and trying to lift. And if you think about a sensitive situation, too much decompression or too much pulling at that joint is gonna cause issues. I talk about it all the time, and it's called your protection mechanism. If you jump on something like an inversion table or you hang from a bar for too long and too much and too often, you get down, you're like, oh, that feels kinda good. But as your day goes on, it gets tighter and tighter and tighter. Odds are you're overstretching this area that should not be being stretched. Instead, it needs more stability. So when you combine a, a stretching mechanism to a sensitive back, then you're adding flexion in, trying to bring your legs up and trying to get in some kind of good contraction at the uh, abdominals, the core, it's a recipe for pain. It's a recipe for sensitivity. So if you've been doing the hanging leg raise at any capacity, check out the video I did breaking down why and other things you can be doing instead of the hanging leg raise. But if you're doing this exercise, take it out completely. There's other things you can be doing that are way better on the low back. So that is it. Those are the seven core exercises that if you have a sensitive uh, low back, if you have post-surgery, fusion, herniations, bulge, whatever you've had done and you are trying to train your core, you're trying to build a stronger, more stable, resilient trunk to protect that sensitive area, these seven should be just blown off the side of the earth, okay? If you're looking for more strategy behind your core training, you're looking for core exercises that you should be doing, because I know what you're thinking, you're like, you just gave me seven exercises of what I shouldn't be doing, but nothing of what I should be doing. If you wanna know what you should be doing, check out fitnessforbackpain.com forward slash core blueprint. There's a link in the description box below this. It's popping up here. You can't copy and paste it, but you can just 
put it in memory and type it in, you'll be, you'll be there. It's free, it's yours. I give you exactly what you should and shouldn't be doing, and I give you exactly the strategy behind how you should be training core with a sensitive back or post-surgery situation. Thanks for watching, guys. I always appreciate your comments, your likes, your shares, uh, just the engagement you guys get. Would love to make more content that's based around what you want, not what I want to do, but what you need and want right now so I can help and serve you where you are. So I always welcome comments. I always welcome suggestions of videos that you want to see more core training, more strength training. Be specific. Thanks so much, and I will see you on the next episode.